This is our daily tarot. And a little bit of a snapshot on astrology, what's going on with that too, because we have Mercury that is making its presence very loud in the reading today. We have an opening card of the lovers. We have the challenge of the hermit. The way we're gonna get through that challenge is the Knight of Swords, and then the overall outcome of the day is the Magician. So we have three major arcanas in our reading today, and interestingly enough, they're all governed by or lending energy to the planet of Mercury. Now, if your eyeballs are catching this finger that's flashing red in front of you, do not worry, I was just printing a chart this morning and I had to change the magenta in my printer. So there is no wound there. <laughs> With that said, let's go ahead and jump into these cards. I do think it's really interesting that Mercury has shown up so much today because Mercury is in retrograde right now, but it's within a couple degrees of Pluto. So we really are taking this time of review around something that is going to be highly transformational in our lives in the sign of Capricorn. Wherever Capricorn sits in your natal chart, this area is getting a lot of energy right now with the fact that Pluto is sitting there, Mercury is within a couple of degrees of Pluto, and then we also have Venus and Mars in Capricorn as well. So we have these four planetary bodies sitting in that sign. And if you can consider, it's like, you know, we have this planet of transformation, right, Pluto, and then we have Mercury, who's bringing perspective to this change and transformation. And then we're going to have Venus, which is bringing compassion to the transformation. And we also have Mars, which is like the initiator, right? The one who like brings order to chaos, following up from behind to like tie everything together and bring order into all of the craziness that's been going on. And Mars takes about two years to move around the whole zodiac system. So this is a change that we are gonna be looking at that will be resolved over the next couple of years. Likely in a large point in 2023, because that's when we'll see this big shift of energy. Where I think it's so interesting that Mercury is coming in to it today in our reading is because the feedback that I've been getting or the noise on the line um, from people is that they're going through a lot of, uh, darkness right now. It's like the, the darkest hour before dawn. People are working through their own inner demons and people are observing themselves and they're either absor observing themselves with compassion and kindness or with like this really intense harsh glare and beating themselves up for this outer circumstance, which please just be gentle with yourself. Mercury is how we look at the world. It's how we describe the world. It's how we speak about things. It's how we see things. It's the first planet that's away from the sun. So it gives some perspective of light, it gives some range. And yet when it is in really close proximity to the sun, it can't see so too much, right? It's like someone having this really bright light right in front of you and you can't see anything, it's blinding. But when it gets some distance from the sun, it gets some perspective, it gets some range. And so we are looking, it's really important that we have some kind of observation around where we get triggered and identified in certain situations and where we turn that glare either on others or toward ourselves. And this is this energy of Mercury and what brings up communication, what has the need to speak what feels called to speak and why it's so important to speak when you feel like your truth needs to be heard. So I think it's interesting that Mercury is showing up because he's like, it's, it's how we shape the world. And, and he's shown up in three different cards. Um, so yeah, we'll just go ahead and jump into the cards. Okay. Cause we're like almost five minutes in. Hey, cool. The opening card that we have for today is the lover's card. So this is a card that is all about exchange and interaction. And the lovers is like, I mean, it can partially be speaking about an actual lover, like an actual companion, 
but it's also speaking about this exchange in one-on-one -on -one communication with people and how we go into that exchange and what is the quality of our conversation you know is it sacred or is it profane you know are we uh running through the hills beating our drum of misery or are we running through the hills beating our drum of prayer like what encompasses your conversation and your communication and what brings you into exchange how do you exchange with other people this is on the table today the challenge that we have for today is perhaps that while we are feeling called to be in exchange with people we actually want to go inward we want to actually withdraw you know from the world a little bit and there's been a lot of feedback in that sense too you know people feel this energy like they should be kind of riling themselves up for something but there isn't a lot of energy to do it and consider that we did just go through in bulk yesterday so we're in this period of time before this the seeds start breaking ground right we're actually like gathering all of our energy so that we can push through that earth and we can push through the hard stuff and break ground in our own lives and it asks us what do we need to heal while we're in this space you know when we're in this this um depth of an experience with ourselves and it's in that depth of an experience with ourselves that we're going to find our greatest light to actually bring out into the world and share with others. And so it brings up this idea of, you know, as much as we are here to communicate, we were given voice boxes where we speak our truths. Like we sometimes may feel like we are vulnerable in that way and we need to go into hiding and maybe not reveal that trial that we're going through you know and so while we may feel really called to be in in interaction with others it's challenging because we feel this drawing inwards of our own energy now the way that we're going to get through it is an interesting card it is the knight of swords so when we look at this card we can see that the the horse is up in the air, none of their feet are on the ground, and the knight here has this winged helmet, much like Mercury, you know, and that's flying towards something. There's something that's happening that's really fast and very speedy, and it's, it's just so funny to me how much we define the world by what we think is possible, and yet there are constantly things coming in that are fresh and new that will stir that up and yet the mind sees it in this fixed way and this is telling us that things are in motion okay everything that our mind is trying to say isn't going to move and isn't going to shift is just an illusion because you know like i'm looking out my window right now at this mountain that I'm sure people see as a very stable landmass. And yet, if you were to look at that mountain, even over a year's time, you'd see how much actually moves and shifts and changes on that mountain if you just observe it. And if I stood on the spot that I'm staring at right now, I might have really good footing in summertime, but right now in the winter, I'd be sliding down the mountain. So. This idea that the mind likes to give us of things being stable and fixed and unmoving is a little ridiculous considering that we're on this spherical shaped object that's, you know, rotating and revolving around the sun in a galaxy that's always in motion. Like there's not much that's actually stable and fixed in us. Everything is in motion. So consider that what you feel is not moving right now is actually in motion. And it's actually in the process of moving quite quickly, but it's just this pacing of the mind that makes it seem as if it's unmoving. Soon enough, you will catch the wind and then you'll actually see where we're all going. The ultimate outcome for the day, the magician, Mercury in his full form, the magician, 
is a conduit just like you and I are. They have all four of their tools on their table. They have their sword, their wand, their cup, and their pentacle. They have their sword, which is their mind and their communications. They have their cup, which is their heart and their relationships. They have their wand, which is their will of their spirit. And then they have the pentacles, the body that moves through life. We have all four of these tools. And what do we do with them here in this life, on this plane, as we're in this experience? What do we call down for help and guidance when we're in a place and state of unknown and in a place of questioning? This is reminding us that each one of us is the magician. Each one of us can create our reality by where we put our attention. And I'm not talking about like virtual reality or like fake it till you make it crap. I'm actually talking about creating within you a vibration that something exists and that already being in form in the world and knowing that and looking forward to seeing how it's actually going to come into form in your life. This is how we do it, right? The fisherman doesn't sit at the edge of the coast and say, I'm not gonna catch any fish today. I'm not gonna catch any fish today. If he, if he felt that way, he wouldn't have shown up to the river, right? You show up to the river and you lay line and you say, one of these lines is gonna catch a fish. And I know that, and I trust that. And if it doesn't, I'm going to refine my, my strategy and learn from what I did so that I can catch a fish. And this is how it's done. This is how we grow and evolve and learn through life is actually by facing challenges. And seeing them for what they are. Which actually isn't a punishment or some karmic fate. It's actually an opportunity. I send you a good wish today. And a big hug. Wherever you are. And if you find yourself in a place where you are in darkness... If you can feel like a switch, you know, like a light switch. It's like where we put our attention on off, right? If you're putting your attention on that darkness, can you maybe experiment with practicing placing your attention on something else? Not as a way to distract yourself, but... More is a way of intention for your own being and what each one of us puts onto our body by what we think about. So for me, if I get too stuck in the mind, I am always giving a lot of appreciation to the sensations in my fingertips because they can pick up uh, temperature and texture and so much information just in what they touch. And if I can put my attention there, or for instance, how my feet are on the ground or where my clothing is sitting on my skin, there's so many different places we can place our attention that won't bring us pain and suffering. And in that way, we have the choice over our mercurial sense. I send you so much love. I'll see you again soon. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.